Hey everyone, uh, Dan McKenzie here with the McKenzie Law Firm. We are an estate planning, estate administration, and small business council law firm in the uh, Denver, Colorado area. And I uh, wanted to make a video today discussing um, two documents that get filed in the Colorado probate process, both of which deal with the finances of the estate. And uh, there's frequently some confusion around those and what they're supposed to contain. Uh, and so um, one is called the inventory, the other is called the accounting. So the inventory is a document that you are required to create. Um, and you know, there's a couple different probate processes in Colorado. You might wanna check out my video on informal versus formal processes to see about this. But in either probate process, you do need to create an estate inventory. And so two things to understand about the estate inventory is one is that it only, it only contains the assets on it that um, are going through the probate process. And so not everything necessarily that the descendant owned, okay? So the descendant might have had a house and a retirement account and a life insurance policy and personal property and a car and uh, uh, the retirement account and the life insurance policy have designated beneficiary instructions on them saying who should get those. Well, those, those, those assets transfer according to those instructions. Those are contracts with those companies and they're just doing what they were told to do. And so those are not going through the probate process. And so sometimes beneficiaries especially will see the inventory and they'll be like, well, you know, where's this bank account? You know, I know he had a, I know he had a, a bank account at Wells Fargo, for example. Why is that not on here? Where's the life insurance policy? Well, those aren't on there because they already had instructions or they were co-owned by someone else who's still alive. Um, or various other reasons that things might have passed um, through some other method other than the probate process. So the probate process might just have the house and the personal property on it, and uh, those are items are not even the majority of what the person owned. The other thing to understand about the inventory is that uh, you're, you're required to list the, uh, uh, the value of the assets that are on it as of the date of death. And um, so sometimes, you know, the inventory is supposed to be done within uh, about three months of when you actually get appointed as a personal representative. So it's supposed to be done fairly quickly. Um, but even in that period of time, right, the stock market, you know, if there's stocks in there, it can jump around. Uh, the real estate market right now in Denver, the, the prices just keep going up very fast, more, uh, f uh, much faster than they have historically gone up. So even in three months, you know, asset values can change. But certainly if the inventory, we see situations where the inventory is not created as, as soon as it was supposed to be. And we're trying to guess years later, actually, you know, what was the value? I had a case recently where uh, um, we were trying to figure out the value of a house um, 18 years ago. So, because it was not, it was not put on an inventory. And so um, you have to hire an expert, of course, to figure that out. But, uh, um, and then we had, we actually had some, some um, contentiousness in the case about whether that was the proper value to use. And the court determined that it was. Uh, the statute is very clear. It's supposed to be date of death value. So even if the asset values have jumped around a little bit since uh, the date of death, the inventory is supposed to disclose that, that, that number. Um, and there is a form for this. The court websites, uh, Colorado Courts website, has uh, there, there's a series of forms relevant relevant to probate called the JDF forms. If you look up on Google the JDF probate forms for Colorado, you will you'll be taking a list of forms, and one of them is the inventory. And uh, you can see it's not the most complicated document. It's two or three pages. It's broken up into sections, and you're just supposed to break out the assets into various sections. But uh, it's supposed to be accurate. You know, it's a, a document. Um, again, uh, the beneficiaries, the creditors get to see it if they ask. Um, they might have to see it if, uh, dep again, depending on which process you're using. So very important that you really put a solid effort into getting that right. If you get, you know, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes there are assets out there that we don't know about or we're just not going to find about, out about until much later on. You can amend the inventory later on if you find out something was missing um, that uh, should have been on there or probably, you know, if something was on there that really shouldn't have been. So it is possible to amend an inventory. So you do the best you can. You put a good faith effort into getting it right, but uh, you do know that uh, down the road you can amend it if necessary. And then the other document dealing with the finances of the estate is um, the accounting. And so the inventory is a snapshot of where you started. This is the picture of what the um, uh, person who passed away owned at the time of their death. And then as you're administering their estate, you're doing things like 
um, preparing a house for sale, for instance. Maybe you have to bring in a painter. Maybe you have to put new carpet in. Maybe you have to pay someone to clear out you know, a lot of stuff. Um, you know, there's usually some maintenance required to get a house ready for sale. And then selling a house, you know, even in a hot real estate market like we have right now, uh, it takes some time. You've got you know, insurance to keep in force. You really got to make sure that that's done. Um, you got to pay the property taxes, make sure there aren't liens put on the house. Um, you got to do maintenance and upkeep. If something breaks or, uh, you know, uh, we got to winterize pipes or keep a lawn going for a while, um, you know, that costs money. And so the estate is spending money on those items. And then it sells the house and, you know, it nets whatever it nets. And so money's coming back in. And uh, that makes distributions and, you know, those, those go out. So the accounting, you know, it sounds kind of intimidating. Accounting, obviously, is a, a very sophisticated professional service that gets provided. Um, but uh, in this case, the accounting is pretty basic. It's basically two sections, right? It's uh, money that went out and money that came in. And uh, you uh, just basically list all the transactions that were done with estate assets chronologically so that at the end when the creditors or the beneficiaries are getting their checks um, they can kind of see okay there was the inventory there's where we started with here's the accounting that explains how we got from that inventory to this check that i'm holding and it really needs to add up right i mean we see sometimes accounting say you know it's easy to make errors um, and sometimes that's intentional of course so you got to watch that um, uh, and the other thing to be aware of is if a creditor or a beneficiary is kind of wants to see more proof about a transaction. If a transaction seems like, boy, that seems um, not relevant to the estate or seems kind of large for what the estate needed. You know, the example I always use is like if there's a $5,000 charge at Home Depot, um, you know, and the creditor's not getting paid their full amount uh, that they've requested, um, they have a right to see, ask to see that receipt and make sure that that really was $5,000 worth of stuff for the estate and not just, you know, you're mixing in your own personal stuff there. Like they need to, they need to be able to, to see that. And so sometimes this process, you know, states, you know, probates, um, I usually say more than a year um, in a lot of cases um, and can be longer than that, can be years. And so if you're the personal representative, you really need to be careful about keeping those receipts in an organized fashion so that if you are asked to produce them later on that you can do that and so that's really important so those are the two documents the inventory and the accounting again the accounting just like the uh, inventory there is a court form for that again uh, google jdf probate forms and uh, you will be taken to a list and one of those is the accounting if the estate is going on for a long time you know if it's going on for more than a year and there's no end in sight, um, you might want to do, there's, there's something called an uh, interim accounting, where basically updating all the beneficiaries and creditors on where things are at. Um, those are typically voluntary. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do those, but it might be a good idea. You kind of want to find out about issues earlier than later. Um, and then you are, of course, required before you close the estate to do a final accounting. And again, in the formal process, you actually have to file that. So um, different, different rules there around the formal and informal process. But I uh, uh, hope this was helpful. Um, if, if you do, um, are in the middle of a probate or starting a probate and are kind of feeling like you might need some help with this, we're, we're happy to talk. Our phone number is 303-578-2745. Again, we are the McKenzie Law Firm, and I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.